Hi, and welcome to another of the After Hours Conversations here at eConnect. It's been a really, really busy day. Um, I think you can see from most of us, we've done a lot of talking today. Um, it's been a day of great discussions. And of course, this is one of our Power of 50 events, where we bring 50 leaders from the industry. As with all of these After, hour, after Hours discussions, we basically bring some of our, the, our, our partners, our technology providers, people that are experts in their field, and just uh, pull their inf insight out. You, Matthias, I'm going to ask you to do your introduction in a moment, but you're exactly that person. You've had some fantastic conversations. I've been seeing the conversations all day, and that's what we're going to do. But before we do that, if you could just explain to the good people watching at home a little bit about yourself and the company to start with. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Matthias and I work for the company Significant and we are a solution provider for uh, handling spare parts and, and uh, spare parts uh, master data, uh, spare part database and also enabling to sell spare parts uh, for dealers and, and, and users of, of industrial goods of various kinds. So it has been a really nice day here to, uh, to have a lot of good conversations with, with uh, industry leaders and, and, and uh, experts in the area of e-commerce and, and also aftermarket. Perfect. Okay, so now, like I said, um, the whole purpose of this is just to have one of those one final conversations because I know you've had so much insight and, and it's been, like I said at the top, really fascinating to see all the conversations happening. It's why I love these events. I like to structure this second, last conversation. I want to know, first of all, the message that you wanted to bring in, the purpose that you wanted to come here, um, the conversation that you wanted to have with this group, this group of, you know, intimate group of very, very, you know, key leaders in, in this spe specific area. What was the messaging that you wanted to bring across? What was the conversation you wanted to have, Matthias? The most important areas we thought was uh, related to, to be able to keep the promises when you go into mm. to B2B yeah. and especially when you go into the aftermarket and sell spare parts. Mm. So if you have spare parts on stock, you can deliver it at a certain time to be able to promise you will have this part in this time and it mm. will fit your equipment. And, and that in turn also goes back to the order and structure and the good quality data that mm. is needed to achieve this, both in logistics and in product descriptions. Yeah. And that was uh, something which was coming back in several of the discussions and, and, and uh, um, that was shared by many, many uh, of the experts. You know, it's, I find it really interesting actually that we quite often see, especially in the spare parts world, mm -hmm. you know, when you think Generally, on average, you're looking at about 60 to 80 percent of service revenue is parts revenue. Mm -hmm. um, yet we see in the service domain, we see so many you know, big solutions that are geared towards um, getting the right engineer there. Mm -hmm. But that parts management is often something that's a little bit un unloved. Mm -hmm. And it's great to see organizations that come in and solve that, especially because there's so many moving parts. N no pun intended. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, van stock. Engineers have a habit of having garage stock, which, you know, as a, a, a service manager in my past life, I can tell you is, is something that drives you mad. Um, one thing that I always find is I'm always surprised um, how much that, that, that conversation there, like I said, isn't quite as got the focus that we should have in certain other areas, like, like we say in the field service domain of the fleet and everything mm -hmm. else, um, when it's such a critical part of, of the service P&L. Um, I do see it evolving. I do see companies taking more, but you guys are the, the specialists in this area. Mm -hmm. You know, are you seeing that move? Are you seeing more maturity now in understanding the, the importance of dedicated parts management and inventory systems, or is there still work to be done? Well, of course, there's more work to be done. Always yes, is, yeah. uh, it always is, and, and especially when it comes to, to, to such complexities that the spare part business uh, is. Uh, but there is a change, and it's a big change. Uh, so if you compare for five years ago, a lot of companies were not mature at all. It was something you maybe did. Uh, maybe you had some PDFs to download, mm -hmm. and then you need to, to figure out and search yourself. Uh, today, it's, it's totally different. Almost all the companies realize that we need to have good data for this uh, business to grow yeah. and if you do it you can grow it and you can increase the revenue even more uh, and a lot of the companies have taken that step uh, still to move on and to do it well on the uh, on, on the web but but have taken the step uh, and others are getting ready to take the step mm. so so there is a big difference in the mindset and in the maturity yes yeah I think I think we're definitely on the upward path Oh, yeah, 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 um, yeah. definitely. I, I, one of the things that I find fascinating, especially at this event where we're talking mm. about the e-commerce side of things, mm. you know, is 
in many ways, we're able, almost able to take a bit of a quantum leap forwards because there are a lot of learnings from the B2C world. Yes. yes. You know, um, I saw a lot of conversation coming out today around that customer acquisition journey and that, that how that outside in thinking, how the the customer has we. How can I phrase this? The, perhaps the best technology in the world feels effortless and seamless on the front end, and we know that it's like the little the, the, the swan on the lake. The little legs underneath are going super hard, mm -hmm. but it's gliding across, and the customer doesn't see that, but it's making their journey very easy. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I, I, I've, I've kind of got to, and I'd love to get your thoughts on this, I've got to the point that to achieve that, we need the data. And that is the foundational building block. We need to get the data right. We need to know where our, our, our core products are. We need to know all of the pricing elements. Everything has to be there. And then we can start thinking. Would you say that's right? The, the first thing is to get the house in order in terms of the data. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be all data, but it has to be the most important data. So, so the parts that are needed to, to do the service, which are high runners, uh, it, it's possible to focus on, on a smaller amount to get started, but, but without really knowing the right part to the right machine and knowing when you can deliver it, then it might fail. You might get a very bad impression for the end customer and consumer uh, or, or uh, well, business user for that matter. Yeah. If you, you place an order of a part, you think you're going to get it one day, you get an, another day and you have a machine which is not working, it's going to create a lot of irritation and tension. Um, and it then ends up being the wrong part yeah. Then it's quite terrible. So yeah. data quality and knowing when to be able to deliver is key. Better to start with fewer parts and get that right instead of, of starting too quickly with too much. Yeah. yeah, not boiling the ocean, but let's do these things in an iterative yes. approach. Yes. Um, the last question I've got for you, um, I wanted to see, because we've seen some of the challenges that have been coming out today um, around the parts and, and uh, the e-commerce pieces coming together. Um, how are they mapping against the, the, your clients and the companies that you're working with? Are you seeing a common thread? Are there certain challenges that we as an industry need to address? Are they different, but depending on the industry vertical? For example, heavy manufacturing versus um, different me medical manufacturing, for example. Mm -hmm. Are we seeing different challenges or is there a common thread? Uh, both. Uh, there, are, there are definitely uh, differences uh, depending on, on how your aftermarket competition looks like. Mm. So if you're in, in, in like heavy duty machinery, excavators, things like that, you may get a filter and you, you have 10, 15, 20 vendors to buy that mm. filter from. So you're probably going to try to find the one we can, which can deliver fast and cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to more complex parts that, that may, need, may be more unique, which only the OEM can provide, then it's a different thing because then you have no competition, basically. Yeah. Uh, and that is in some areas. In other areas where you have more special machinery, which is produced only by you, then the aftermarket comp competition is going to be very, very low. Mm. Uh, there are also differences in the price of the product you're delivering. If, if it's a very expensive piece of equipment, you're probably going to uh, purchase a service uh, agreement where mm. the manufacturer takes care of every service during a certain period of time. But once the equipment is sold to another owner, the, the logic is different. Then they're going to look for the cheapest price instead yes. in terms of parts. So, uh, so that also is a bit different depending on the kind of product you have but it all still goes back to the right data. Yeah, and, and, and I, I suppose that's exactly where companies like yourselves are coming in. Yes. You know, because what, what we're seeing there is the, it's the opportunity cost, isn't it? It's the revenue, potential revenue leakage yes. of those parts now going to a third party or a, a, not from the OEM. Is, have I got that right? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I think so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, look, yeah. I think it's been a great day. I know that you've had a lot of good conversations and I know I've kept you beyond time as well. So thank you ever so much for joining me for the After Hours Conversation with us. Really good to speak to you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Take thank care. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.